It is different. It might appear the same, but it's not. Appearances are deceiving. We're trying to do our best to make it work and to appear the same. We're going to go through the same motions and we try to sound the same, but it's not. I'm trying to do my best to make an eye contact with you, but I can't look at the pews because they're empty. There's literally nobody in front of me right now. It appears that I'm looking at you right now, but it's only an appearance. On my end, I'm staring into a lifeless lens of a web camera that just dispassionately is staring back at me. On your end, you see a digital image transmitted to you, a collection of pixels and numbers. I'm not flesh and blood to you, but just a two-dimensional color rendering of a bunch of numbers sent to you over an internet cable. It is different. It might appear the same, but it's not. Appearances are deceiving. You are trying to do your best to make it work. And you try to do things the same. You go through the same motions. You try to say the same things. A lot of you still are going to work and much, not much changed, but there's someone you know personally for whom it's not the same. Maybe that someone is you. You've lost your job, even if just temporary. But who knows? It's definitely not the same. You go to the store, and it appears to be the same. You pull into the parking lot, and there's all these cars out there, people shopping inside, but it's not the same. Some shelves are empty, and they're sold out of certain items. Many stores are closed now or limiting their hours or limiting access to the inside of the store. And more and more people are heeding the call to stay at home. And the list goes on and on about the things that appear to be the same but not the same. School children are still doing their homework and their schoolwork, but they're not going to school. Parks are still open, and uh, you can still do some stuff and do some activities, but you see that ominous yellow caution tape wrapped around the playgrounds. People are still gathering but they're maintaining their social distance, and the numbers have to be 10 or below. And the images on your screen, no, they don't seem to be real. They're not flesh and blood to you and me when they come from faraway places like Italy or New York. They don't seem to be real, but they are. The real suffering, the death, the pain, the uncertainty of what lies ahead, it can't be ignored, even though right now, for us, things seem to be Okay, it is different. It might appear the same, but it's not. Appearances are deceiving. The Palm Sunday account, it appears to be a huge celebration. Many of the translations, the Edda, 
kind of a subheading to Matthew 21, calling it a triumphal entry. But what is really going on on that Palm Sunday? Ultimately and fundamentally, it is the fulfillment of the prophecy, Behold, your king is coming to you. Most of us have no clue what a king's visit is supposed to look like, especially in a faraway Middle Eastern country, especially a couple of thousand years ago. But if you start humming, Prince Ali, famous is he, Prince Ali, mighty is he, you remember that song? And your mind will conjure up an elaborate parade with music and dancing and exotic type animals, a whole zoo. That's what the royal parade should look like. Instead, but humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the fall of a beast of burden. When Jesus the ruler, the king, the Lord, rode through the town. It was on a donkey. A reminder of the humbleness, of the humbleness of our Savior who came into the world to suffer and die. On this, the beginning of the Passion Week, we travel with Jesus to the cross and we greet him as he comes to die. But it is different. It might appear the same, but it's not. Appearances are deceiving. This will not be the last time that Jesus comes into the holy city. The next time he comes, he will come in glory. At the end of the age, but only because he came in weakness and humility at his first coming. The Lord still comes to us in a humble way through his means of grace. There's nothing in the baptism and the Lord's Supper to impress the world. Just water, just bread, just wine. But they are different. They appear the same, but they're not. Appearances are deceiving. And to those of us, you included, they are a reminder that Jesus comes to us in lowly guise in the present age so that we can share with his glory when he returns with all his power and might. And there are more reminders like that in our text, more than meets the eye. Our text mentions Bethphage, which was located on the Mount of Olives, east of Jerusalem. Zechariah 14, 4 says, On that day his feet shall stand on the Mount of Olives, that lies before Jerusalem on the east and the Mount of Olives. And then the rest of the Zechariah passage speaks of the place as to where the final fullness of God's kingdom would be revealed, culminating in verse 9. And the Lord will be king over all the earth. On that day, the Lord will be one and his name, one. In plain English, the scripture is telling us that the king of the earth is the one whom the people greet on that Palm Sunday. Now, this prophecy is fulfilled in a hidden way. The appearances are deceiving, but it is fulfilled contrary to what it appeared to be as it seemed out of place. But remember, 
appearances are deceiving. Your Palm Sunday is different this year. My Palm Sunday, as I look at those empty pews in front of me, is different. And there's a lot more differences than that. I don't need to explain them to you. You know. You know why. Because of you know what. Fear and death. And the prince of this world appears to reign, but he has been judged and he has been defeated by the king over all the earth. Easy to miss that, and certainly the world doesn't get it at all. But you know better. As the Lord reveals these things to you through his word, you remember that the appearances are deceiving. You have to think the opposite way of the world. Although your way of thinking might seem out of place, to the rest of the world. And here's more for you from God's word. When Solomon entered into Jerusalem to be crowned king, he rode a colt. And there are numerous references in the Old Testament that state that an animal being used uh, sacred in a sacred way must never have been previously used in an ordinary way. And Zechariah 9, 9 proclaims, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you, righteous and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Again, those who greeted Jesus were not aware of it. Jesus' entry into Jerusalem on the colt is the fulfillment of the prophecy about their king is coming. Your king is coming to you. Another reminder for us. And what's the point of looking into all those passages it's a reminder. It's God's way to remind us not to rely on appearances, but rely on the Word of God. The humble man rides a donkey into Jerusalem to die on the cross. He is the king of the world. He is your king. And the reason the king comes in such a humble way is to encourage you. In part, you remember the king of the donkey and cross, that you might always be reminded that the Lord's victory and power often appear to be unremarkable, even weak in this world. And there's comfort for you in that in the form of assurance, though your life and maybe even at this point, your confidence and maybe even your faith might be low and humble and weak. It doesn't mean that the Lord is far away from you. On the contrary, He is coming to you. He is with you. It might not appear to be much of a Palm Sunday celebration to you, but there is a greater reason to remember the king of donkey and cross. What appears as insignificant is actually a treasure to behold. The Lord still uses humble ways today so that you can join him when he reveals his glory and might later. In the humble waters of your baptism, God declared you his child. He forgave you all your sins, and he granted you eternal life. 
in the holy sacrament of the Lord's Supper. This simple bread and wine are not just that. Contrary to all the appearances, the Son of God, the second person of the Holy Trinity, gives you his body and his blood. Why? For you, for the forgiveness of all of your sins. The Son of God gives you his body and blood to save you now. Now, you can't see any of those things, but you have his word on it. And by faith, you know who he is and that he is here. He comes to you to save you now. Therefore, by faith, you know that despite all the appearances, you are indeed a holy, chosen, and beloved child of God, blessed with his favor and help for now and for eternity, because all of your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.